Untap your full potential with the Untapped Deck Tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to a slightly different draft video. Today we'll be taking a look at a multicolor cube draft that I did recently on Twitch. And the way this works is you draft on this website called MTGA Draft and you can pretty much import any cube or draft set that you want. You can draft with eight people and then afterwards you can import your deck list that you drafted into Magic Arena to play out your games. So that's what we'll be doing for today. And to give you some additional context, this was the second draft pod after going two and one in the first pod. The the top four advanced to the final pod which is the one we're gonna take a look at right now so gonna try and use a similar strategy to last time try and find a three color pair that works for us and try and get some good fixing why not try five color good stuff it does require getting a few specific cards which you're not guaranteed to get go loss niv mizzet and uh yeah it's just uh, a little bit of a a riskier strategy in general, but we did open Golos pack one pick one, so we might actually go for it. Other considerations, cut to ribbons, did a lot of work in our draft too. Yeah, those are pretty much the two cards I would consider here. A Golos or cut to ribbons. Yeah, I guess we'll try Golos. And then we'll need to try and get lots of fixing. Maybe Field of the Dead, there is Field in the cube as one of the few colorless lines. All right, second pack. Ooh, Ashok, Rashmi, Garruk, Spring to Mind. I want all of these. So I'm guessing we're going for one of the Planeswalkers. So between Ashok and Garruk, which one do we prefer? I mean, presumably we're going to be main green for the fixing, so that's going to make Garruk a little easier to cast. Some leaning Garruk over Ashok. And then hope to wheel Spring to Mind or one of the dual lands. Probably going to go with Paradise Druid, but just let me double check here. Uh, yeah, seems like... Either Paradise Druid or Steam Vents. And Steam Vents is eh, not the best land at the moment, but of course could be useful. Just take the Paradise Druid's early ramp and mana fixing is all we need. Alright, next up. I see Thermorphic Expanse. Thought Seizes, I guess okay, but... Not too excited about it. Turn one, we're going to be playing tap lands in this cube, so Thought Seize being a turn two play makes it a little bit less effective. And then Temple of Silence, probably worse than Expanse. Golgari Locket could also be serviceable, but I'll take the fixing here. Leyline Prowler jumps out as another ramp slash mana fixer. Uh, Pride Sovereign also finds Splash Card, and then both dual lands would be nice too. I'll go with a Leyline Prowler here. So we're kind of Golgari as our base, and then potentially splashing for Golos. So we don't have to be a 5 color deck, but we definitely have the means to, with all the fixing we already picked up. All right, give me a reason not to take Overgrown Tomb. Uh, yeah, don't really have one. Kethys would be okay. Makes our Legendaries one cheaper, so it's good with Golos, Garruk, and presumably some other cards we can pick up. So I wouldn't necessarily fault anyone for wanting to try Kethys, but Overgrown Tomb is just too good here. It's our base color, and it's an untapped dual land. Next up, all right, now now I can be a little greedy after taking the Disciplines Overgrown Tomb. Your dual lands are kind of like your vegetables. They're necessary for a balanced meal, even if they're not the most exciting. But now that we had our veggies, we get to have our desserts, which is Trostani Discordance. Uh, Boneyard Lurker could also be fine. 
ultimatum going to be a bit too difficult to cast. And yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just take a Skull Prophet here. Keep taking the Golgari ramp cards. Struggle could also be useful when facing a multicolor or a protection from multicolor card. Skydiver has a bit of synergy. But uh, yeah, pretty nice that we got all these early ramp cards because now we can kind of focus on picking up the uh, expensive finishers, which we already have a couple of. So yeah, I like where this is going. This is our original pack, Driven to Despair. Until end of turn, creatures we control gain Trample, and when they deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Could be good with Trostani. And then the Despair is the same, but with the opponent discarding. Although there's also a Sure Assemble, which seems kind of nice. Make 3 2 2 tokens, or can make a creature indestructible and give it a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Gotta kinda tilt your head here to read the cards. Alright, Rashmi wields. I uh, get to be greedy and take a Rashmi on the splash over Shana. Rootbound Crag would also be a consideration. But uh, we had enough vegetables, so I'll take a, a little bit more dessert. Uh, this pack doesn't have much. I suppose Iluna could be okay. And we've got a couple non humans we can mutate onto potentially. Covetous Urge is going to be a bit difficult to cast. And Grumguli could be fine too if we end up with niv -Mizzet. Might be better than Iluna, but let's take the more powerful card. And then now probably Golgari Locket as a bit more ramp. And we wield the Pride Sovereign. I'll take it. So we're base black green, but can easily splash all three remaining colors. Don't know if I'll play the bronze-eyed lion. Probably not. So these are kind of the cards I'm less likely to play. All right, pack number two. Uh, Hero of Precinct One is definitely a powerful card in the cube. What else do we have back for more? If we go with kind of a reanimator strategy, goes well with my Skull Prophet. A bit light on creatures to reanimate. There's a few dual lands. Um, yeah, I think I'm taking the hero. And then hope to wield Vraska or back for more. And even though hero isn't in one of our main colors, it's still a card we can try and get out early and pick some white mana fixing for it. I do have a surprisingly high number of non-multicolor cards in my deck at the moment, between Paradise Druid, Pride Sovereign, Locket, and Golos. But the rest of the cards should be multicolor here. Alrighty. Shalai looks good. Mortify looks good, and Tome of the Guild Pact. Although, like we mentioned, our deck is actually a little bit less effective with Tome than we would like it to be. But we do have Ramp, which means we can ramp into the Tome before we start casting our multicolor stuff. So I still kind of like it here. And then there's a chance we wheel something useful out of this pack, whether it's Mortify, Shalai, or just a random dual land. Alright, so now we got to focus on multicolor cards as much as possible. So I'll pass on Luminarch Aspirant. Yasharn is tempting, because it helps me hit my land drops, fills out my curve nicely. Don't think I need Amara. Uh, Tulsimir would also be fine, but we have a lot of 5 drops, so I think Yasharn fits my curve better. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Maelstrom Archangel, even though we've got fixing, still a bit difficult to cast. So I think I'll pass on that, but if we wheel it, I'll consider it. So now a hand where we get to go turn 2 Prophet or Paradise Druid into turn 3 Yasharn. 
means we won't have any mana issues for the rest of the game. Alright, don't see anything amazing, so I'm probably just going to take a land. Uh, I guess Omnath could be kind of okay. I do have a Thermorphic Expanse to synergize with it. But I don't have any other ramp cards that put extra lands in play, which is kind of what we want with Omnath. Which land do I prefer? Canacomb, probably. The Pose Deploy is also a consideration as just a 2-mana cantrip. That's also multicolor for Hero and Tome of the Guild Pact. But I do need to start picking up some more mana fixing. Is Catria Trium good? That's okay. We don't really have any red cards at the moment besides Golos. Crystal, probably don't want to take more colorless cards since we need to increase our multicolor count. Not the best synergy with Gitrog Monster. And don't really care too much about the red duels. So I think I just go for the Triumph then. March of the Multitudes, eh, could be okay. It's good with Trostani mostly. But we're not really a token deck. I guess it's also good with Hero if we get some tokens first. There's even a chance. Let's see, can we wheel it for... Probably not, but... I'll take the fixing. And then now... There's a Jungle Hollow. Don't really want any of these other multicolor cards. Maybe Gigantha. But it's still not all that amazing. And then Jungle Hollow over Clifftop. Seems okay. So, yeah, just want to find more relatively cheap cards between 2 and 4 mana. Ideally multicolor, and ideally green, so they're easier to cast. Ooh, Mirari's Wake. I don't think I can pass up on that card. Giving our creatures plus one plus one is great with our token theme, with Trostani, Garruk, Assemble. Doubling my mana is great if we're going off with Tome of the Guild Pact and Golos. And uh, yeah, it's just a good card. Evolving Wilds would also be nice. Don't really have a ton of synergy with Winding Constrictor. Watley's Raptor, kind of the same. Yeah, take a wake. And Wake also gets better if we can play it a little bit ahead of schedule thanks to our various 2 and 3 mana ramp cards. Probably gonna take some Petal Grove here. Nothing I really want to splash. Maybe final payments, but not really. Alright, so our deck's shaping it nicely, so we're kind of an Abson base deck splashing for a Rashmi, Golos, and that's pretty much it. So Abson as our base. Thrash can still be played for double green. Don't love anything else really. Could just take the pathway to help with Golos a little bit. It's just an upgrade over a basic forest for the most part. We don't have much removal but we're kind of a ramp deck trying to just play some acceleration and then hope that our powerful 4 and 5 mana plays can stabilize us. What do we think about Heart of Kiran? Don't have many Planeswalkers to crew it, and we're also a bit light on 3 powered creatures, so it's not great. Uh, probably, let's see, I guess I could mutate snap decks for double white and black, so we don't need red mana for it. Response could also be double white. Uh, trying to think if Neoform could be any good. Maybe it could have been. Wield Emara, so probably take that over Archangel at this point. Yeah, we'll have to think about snap decks. I do have a few humans as well that I won't be able to mutate onto. So I don't think the mutate creatures are going to get there. I mean, if you insist, I'll take Omnath, but I don't know if we'll play it. Don't think we need Demir Lockets. 
All right, so heading into the last pack, do need to pick up some more playables, but uh, overall, I don't hate the direction this is going in. Maybe crystal over binding. Uh, let's take the binding, actually. Don't think this is a Doom Foretold deck. All right, the binding's a maybe, but I'll need a bit more blue fixing for it. Winding Constrictor, I guess, is fine. And then pack number three. What did we open? Some dual lands with Temple and Pathway. Thief of Sanity going to be a little challenging to play on turn three. Breeding Pool could also be fine. And then Dream Trawler, double white, double blue is also going to be tough. There is a Conclave Mentor, but we just don't have many plus one counters to go with it. So I might just take a dual land. There's also Cloud Blazer, which is technically splashable, but we have a bunch of fives. Yeah, I'll just take the land now, and then hopefully in the next couple packs we can take some more exciting multicolor cards. And then which land to take is interesting. I clicked on Temple here. Is it better than Pathway or Breeding Pool? Yeah, probably. We are base black green. Possible pathway is better as an untapped land, but... All right, now we're talking. Casualties of War, Eerie Ultimatum. Eerie Ultimatum might be a little tough to cast, but it's definitely within our range. But Casualties, I think, is the pick. We don't have much removal. And this kind of covers everything, and we can ramp into it. And then there's even a chance Ultimatum Wheels, Scatter Groves would also be a fine pickup. Now that we have Mirarius Wake, I'm kind of regretting not taking the March of the Multitudes. But I think we'll be okay. Well, well, well. Nif Mizzet Reborn. We didn't build our entire deck around it, but it's still pretty good here. We've got a lot of Golgari cards, Selesnia cards, a Rashmi. So it's still probably going to find two or three cards. And what else is the pick if we don't take Niv? Don't really care about Glowspore Shaman. Scarab God would also be on the splash. And we don't have much removal to back it up. So there's nothing else I really want. Yeah, I'm down. So now I definitely need to pick up more fixing. Yeah, Zakama, I guess, could potentially ramp into it, but Niv Mizzet poses similar challenges and is probably just a better card in general. A Janion Yielding is looking good. The Spark also. So it's between these two. I mean, I don't lack expensive cards, so I'm kind of worried about a hand full of 5 and 6 drops. There's also Uro, if we're going to splash blue, although it is double blue to escape, which, uh, you know, isn't easy, but it does make my Niv Mizzet better. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we can try and play Uro here. I mean, honestly, it might be the Spark as a cheap multicolor card that also goes well with Tome, but I guess I'll uh, take the card that's banned in multiple formats. Captain Cisse could be pretty strong, can find all those legendary cards like uh, Emara, Uro, Rashmi, Yasharn, Trostani, Golos, Niv, Garruk, yeah, that's uh, probably enough. Nickel Bolas a bit pricey at 7. Don't have much synergy with Rogue Refiner. Flower Flourish would also be nice as just a bit of mana fixing and a 1 mana multicolor card for Hero Precinct 1 and Tome. So Flower Flourish actually would have been pretty nice too. Now that a Reliquary also definitely a good card, can ramp and uh, sort of fix our mana, but it also requires plenty of forests and planes. 
to keep it going. I imagine I gotta take the Savai Triome here. If we want to have a chance of casting niv -Mizzet, we need all the Triomes we can get our hands on. Deafening Clarion, not that great since it kills my mana creatures. Yeah, we'll just take the Triome. So I don't love the Winding Constrictor. Everything else is probably okay. And then there's some other cards I can potentially play if needed. Like the Law Mage's Binding I guess looks better now that we're gonna play a bit of blue for Niv and Uro. Alright, next pack. Not gonna play Genesis Ultimatum. Crystal would be okay. My main concern with Crystal is that it's not multicolor for Hero and Tome. But I guess we've got enough multicolor stuff. And this does do a good job of fixing for Niv. Maybe better than Botanical Sanctum. And there's nothing else I really want. And we just keep taking Crystals. I guess Kyura could also be fine here. Can play it for just green mana, and it ramps by untapping one of our permanents. And it's a multicolor card for Hero and Tome. Yeah, that seems fine. Sagoth Crystal would be nice too though, but... Take the Cura. So, I wish we had a few more dual lands. Definitely taking the Breeding Pool now. Cloud Blazer would also be fine, but uh, we've got enough 5 drops. And Breeding Pool is pretty important now that we have Uro. And niv -Mizzet Reborn. Solar Blaze still not looking great since it kills a lot of my own creatures. And a Gross Spiral maybe? Or is it Savai Crystal? This one's close. I do have quite a bit of red in my dual lands, so I don't necessarily need Crystal. And Gross Spiral gives me a little bit more ramp, even if I don't have a ton of blue to necessarily play it on turn 2 each game. Proud Wild Bonder, it's a curve filler that's also multicolor and it counts as a Gruul card for niv -Mizzet. So it's maybe going to be easier to cast than Spellbreaker, even though Spellbreaker is a better card individually, because we can just play this for double green and we wield the Jani. So that's nice. Alright, I think we ended up with a pretty sweet deck. Wish we had a little bit more mana fixing, but uh, can't have it all. Don't think this matters too much. Maybe Rogue Refiner. I'm just not going to do anything with the energy. I guess 4 mana Omnath could make it too. Probably not going to play Samut though. Alright, so... Do we play Locus of Creation? It has synergy with Thermorphic Expanse, Gross Spiral, and Uro to put extra lands in play. And that's about it. So it doesn't seem amazing. And it is difficult to cast. So I think uh, I'm going to go against Omnath here. What do we think of the other 4 mana Omnath? Don't have many elementals. But it does reward us for playing extra lands. Eh, it's kind of medium. And 3 color cards also don't synergize with niv -Mizzet Reborn. If I have to cut one card here it's probably a sure assemble. And then we got to figure out the mana base here. So how many cards is this? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus 5 is 15, but this is probably like an 18 land deck. So I need to make 3 more cuts. Alright, Rogue Refiner, Wild Bonder, maybe Law Mage's Binding. It is nice to have a little bit of cheap removal, but it is both blue and white, so it's not the easiest to cast. Yeah, the reason to want a Wild Bonder is because it's a Gruul card for niv -Mizzet. But 
that's about it. I'm not super attached to it. Probably just a law mages binding. And then we gotta figure out a mana base. So for red mana, the only red cards I need are a Niv Mizzet and then the Golos activation. So I don't need much red. Built into our creatures, we have Paradise Druids and Leyline Prowler that fix for red, as well as Catria Crystal and Tome of the Guild Pact. So one mountain is more than enough here in terms of red mana. And I might not even need a mountain, but it is nice to have with their Morphic Expanse. And then we have Pathway, Triome, Triome, that also make red mana. So one mountain. Then in terms of black mana, I need it for Prophets, Prowler, niv Mizzets, and Garruk, and Casualties. So I don't need a ton of black mana. Eight black sources are probably enough. And built into our deck we also have Lockets as a black source as well as Tome, but that's mostly only for Casualties and Garruk. So uh, let's say I have at least seven lands that produce black mana. Currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one swamp seven. So I think that's just enough. But if we have room, we can maybe add one more. Then uh, blue mana. I need gross peril, uro, which is double blue to escape. Rashmi, Nif, Golos. So it's similar to the black situation, so about eight blue sources at the very least. And built into the mana base, we can rely on uh, Paradise Road, of course, too. And then we have Catria Crystal. So I think, again, around seven lands that produce blue mana, ideally. So we've got one, two, three. Four, five, so I would need a couple more islands. So let's add two if we can. And then uh, white mana, I need for Hero, Emara, Yasharn, Sise, Nif, Trostani, Mirari's Wake, and Ajani. So white mana, I need around, let's say, nine white sources, ideally. And uh, built into the mana base, we've got Paradise Druids. And that can make whites. So, not too many. So, how many white lands do we have at the moment? One, two, three, so the white situation is a little dire. So, I do rely pretty heavily on my mana fixing from Paradise Druid and Leyline Prowler as well. So yeah, ideally we would add like four planes to the deck, but probably not gonna have room for it. And then green mana, of course as many as we can get. So in the mana base we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, I can kind of get away with just two forests here which would put me to three cards above the limits. So I probably got to cut an island and a plains. And then do I cut that one basic mountain? I think I do. It's going to make my Nif a little awkward if I draw Thermorphic Expanse, but I still have a few other red sources between Pathway, Triome, Triome, Crystal, and then Paradise Rhythm. Prowler, so I don't think I can afford a basic mountain in this case. Yeah, the mana base is not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough to cast our spells in most games. And then just double checking the sideboard if we didn't miss anything important. Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's uh, export. I'm gonna get our fancy lands in there. So three planes. 
two islands, one swamp, and two forests. We do have a Johnny in the deck, so I gotta make use of this one. And we'll call this... Well, we have Tome and we have Nivmizid Reborn. With a fine hand. Gotta get my Sun Petal Grove online. A few ways we can sequence. <clears throat> but this seems fine. So we're just missing a red mana for Niv, but we don't have many red sources. Alright, I was afraid that might happen, so I could have not attacked with a hero. But maybe they fear a combo trick here, who knows. Yeah, it can be farmed to market, because our previous opponent had that in their deck. Could just play Locket to guarantee a 6 next turn, I think I prefer that over Yasharn. Shovel, as it turns out, not a unicorn, but still gets a plus one counter here. Alright, there's my red mana for Niv. Although this turn I'm probably playing a six drop. And which one should that be? A Jani dies to Shovel. Could just Garruk make two wolves. And they're just chumping. Interesting spot. I think I do Garrick, but it could end poorly. Is this a D-Spark, maybe? They don't get to draw a card here, since it exiles. So they kind of wasted two mana there. A Jani minus on Emil seems fine here. And then get my Carrier Trimo in play so we can play Nif. Let's 
single or double block. I wouldn't mind a trade. And if they use a combo trick, that's fine by me. Ooh, Mirari's Wake. So I could minus, although they do get to draw a card, because Ajani would be dead. Which would trigger Shovel. So it's not the best exchange. Could just play Niv. If I play Wake, I don't have the white mana to play Yasharn afterwards. I think I just plus. Right, those are pretty good. To your courage. So Niv. Three mana. I guess Crystal plus Niv. Or Niv, see what we draw. And then Crystal. What's better here? Rush me, maybe? I mean, this is an embarrassment of riches, really. Casualties... Cura... Is Cura a May ability? It's not, so I'm kinda worried that we're gonna deck again. Is this a May ability? You may cast it... But it does end up in my hand. All right, let's go with the Growth Spiral then. It's the card that's least likely to end up in me decking. So... Ajani has the Bounty Counter on it, so they couldn't put one on Niv. How many cards do I have left? 21. Right, consume, not a bad answer to Niv. Luckily, Death Touch isn't lethal to Planeswalkers. Alright, so step one, play Mirarius Wake using these. And then... I can do a bunch of stuff. Do I kill Shovel while I can? I can kill their green source too. Sure. Can I play something else alongside it? No white mana, so I guess I can Growth Spiral and then still Casualties. And we'll keep that to Cycle, I think. I haven't even plus the Jenny yet. Whoops. Let us regroup. Seventeen cards remain. <laughs> uh, it's funny how my main concern is decking. All right. All 
All right, fine, I'll put this in play. Don't want to overextend into a sweeper. And this is probably enough. Sooner die than kill. Yeah, I'll, I'll skip out on Rush Me, I think. Five cards in my graveyard. I'm gone for now, but not forever. Do I even want to search land? I don't think I do. I'm, I'm too concerned, chat. It's probably enough. Could ultimate the Johnny soon. And Janny's so wise. Is this a March of the Multitudes, maybe? Alright. I can still rebuild after a sweeper and win the game, so I don't think I need to play anything out. Even though I could protect the Jani. Could spin the wheel with Golos. That's a dangerous game. Alright, fine. We'll do one spin. To get it out of our system. No, 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 no. <laughs> you won't trick me again. Alright, we'll play a Cisse. There's no harm in that. And then... Uh, yeah, that's probably enough. Seven cards left. Oh man, Rissa Redeem would have been pretty awesome with March of the Multitudes. Alright. <laughs> well, there's not much left to search. Maybe should have double checked. You know, chat, if I had the untapped tracker and I checked my deck list, I would have known for sure. Just saying. So I guess there's no harm in plussing a Jani now. So the opponent's hoping to top deck some sort of sweeper, I'm sure. 
and we're just going to hold threats in case they do. All right. So, abs on tokens, I guess we can call it. I mean, it's not like I've got any special cards for the matchup. What do we think of this? Looks good. Fetch up my islands. Never mind. Fetch up my swamp. Although I wouldn't be able to grow spell on two. So I guess we can go turn to Grove, Grow Spiral, and then Expanse afterwards. So next turn I get to play Niv. Is that a turn for Niv? Could also play Jenny. Frask is kind of scary, because the tokens can kill Kiora and Ajani, uh, and they can also almost start copying those with the Riz. So I could go Ajani minus on token, but then Ajani would die to the attack. So I guess I just play Niv anyway, I get to draw an extra card from Kiora, and that's still fine. Probably don't need your Sharn. And what do I discard? Islands. I kind of want to just trade Niv for the Assassin almost. The tokens themselves have Planeswalker Death Touch. Kiora is powerful after I play Mirari's Wake, because I can go Wake, play land and still have 4 mana afterward. I think I trade. Call me crazy. Ooh, Garrick. Alright, I think Garrick probably changes the equation somewhat. Or does it? So, I could go Mirarius Wake and then a 4 mana, which is enough for, let's say, Rashmi or Leyline Prowler. Next turn, Risk can start doubling the Assassin tokens, which is what I'm afraid of. But then, if I get to untap with Mirarius Wake, I could play Ajani and Garrick in the same turn. This could also be a March of the Multitudes end of turn. Yeah, I think I just like the Mirari's Wake here. 
just sets up a very powerful turn next turn. And then Rashmi is probably... or actually Prowlers may be better if I'm gonna trade for the Assassin. See if they have a march. Would be for five here. And then if they can double tokens with the wrist next turn, that could be bad. Yep. Alright. No land, please. They've got a land. Alright. I think we might die here. Do the wolves have what it takes to beat Rizzo Redeemed? At this point I don't need Kiora anymore. Uh, casualties is good too, I guess. Is it better than a Johnny? I think so. Hopefully this buys us a bit of time. Can exile Alanda with a Johnny? I mean, the lifelink on Leyline Prowlers being quite nice here. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Play a Jani, I have to exile Alanda here, I guess. Or I could go digging with a plus. But I still have other stuff I can play this turn. Am I gonna trust the auto tapper? I guess I am. I will teach you humility if I must. Every fight is for her. Let's do this manually. Green. Whites. Blue. And that should do it. I think I gotta stay back. It's worse if they have removal for Prowler. Yeah, this has been quite the game. Our turn for Niv wasn't good enough. The March of the Multitudes plus the Rizzo Redeemed. Quite a wombo combo. But we're not dead on board, at least. And Captain Cissé maybe gets to find something useful. 
Trostani could make some life-linking tokens. Never mind. Yeah, they've got an interesting decision. I need to keep either Rashmi or Ajani alive. That way I have one source of card advantage. They don't both need to be alive, but at least one of them. So now I can just put Rashmi in front of this, eat a lifelinker, and then we'll still have a Jani to provide extra cards, which hopefully is enough. And then keep the lifelinker, which is pretty important here. Could also exile my own creature, but plus things seems better here. Alright, gonna cycle the crystal. Now one life is not enough. Hey, Lola with the raid. Welcome, welcome everyone. We're about to lose this game here. This is round two of our cube drafts. That's too bad. Don't really have any changes. Submit and hope for the best. So what's my sequencing? I guess jungle hollow turn one. Is this gonna be another turn for Niv? Kinda looks like it. Could also decide to play Captain on 3, but then I wouldn't be able to Niv on 4. Ooh, never mind. Get to have my cake and eat it too. Alright, so what does CC search up here? Do I want to search before or after playing Niv? I guess after, that way I'm more likely to hit spells with Niv. And then we'll have more information about what to get. I'll take a casualties. That seems good. And then Captain, can we do this end of turn? We can. So I'll just pass and then we'll decide end of turn what to get. Turn 3 CC, turn 4 Niv, turn 5 maybe Casualties.
All right, shall I? Let's see. Doesn't protect lands. So I'm still liking casualties here. Set them back on mana. And we can... Garruk. Could be fine. Sure. Is this a game where I'm attacking with Captain C6 because I have too much card advantage already? Probably not. I might want to get something cheap that I can play alongside Mirari's Wake next turn. Yeah, this is kind of gross. We got pretty lucky with our mana. Captain Cisse, body blocking, cruel celebrants. Uh, let's get a Mara. And this turn I get to go Wake plus. I guess I can go Wake. Eh, never mind, I can. Wake and then play a Mara. I'll have to shock myself. Let's see, I guess I can even play Kiora too. I could even untap Captain Cissé to search up two things per turn. Oh man, this deck. And then Nif kills Vraska, I think. Probably. Sure. And then Amara can block the assassin. I won't forgive this. The synergy between Uro and Kiora is also kind of nice. I guess I could use more land drops, so we'll get a Yasharn. Yasharn first, and then Uro, so we can put the extra lands in play. Oh man, the sequencing here is just perfection. All right, I'm not going to play Tome. I'm not going to fall for it. Uh, and then... I guess I don't want to run too much into a sweeper, so we'll play Garrick. Could untap my captain, like I mentioned, but I think we've got pretty much all the cards we need. 
Yeah, they pretty much need like sweeper plus answer for Garrick. I guess if they have like four mana sweeper plus like a D spark, they could maybe get there. Alright, uh, there's no settled wreckage, so I guess March of the Multitudes is the best they can do. So we'll start by killing celebrants. Looks like you weren't fit to survive. Captain Cisse finally gets to attack. All right, march for two. Yeah, I could have played Trostani, but you know, I don't want to BM. All right, well, that was a pretty fun match. So yeah, I think that's gonna wrap things up for today. I wanna thank uh, the people that organized the cube for inviting me, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, make sure to check out future cube streams as well. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. 